No, you can help me. Good to be here tonight. Good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, remember one to six. I'm not going to be here tonight. Uh, I talked to Dennis. He's got a head call. I'm going to join them to the son's virus. Pray for them. I'm praying for one who's got the virus. He's got COVID virus going around. But God knows what. God can take care of it all. That's my command. Jason, you pray. Dear God in heaven, first of all, I ask for you my sins and my fellow sinner today. Dear God, I thank you, Lord, for loving us. I thank you for saving us. I pray to God that you be at the service tonight, Lord. I pray to God that you just have your word said, Lord God, tonight, whatever you have, want to have said. I pray to God that you just have your will. I pray to God that you just take us off and Lord, bless it to your benefit. God, just be with each and every one that's gathered out here to worship you tonight, Lord. I pray to God that you just give us a blessing before we leave. Lord, I pray for the ones that's not here. I pray to God that for the ones that's sick, Lord, with this whole stomach bug. I pray for the ones, Lord, that's out with COVID, Lord, whatever their need may be. I pray to God that you just see the Lord to fulfill it. I pray to God for each and every one, Lord, that's on the prayer list tonight. God, I pray to God that you just touch them. I thank you, Lord, for loving us, God. I thank yes. you for saving us, God, in your holy, sweet, and precious name. Amen. 128. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. So we appreciate each one that's come out to be with us tonight. Do be much in prayer for all those that are not able to be with us tonight. Let me take care of this real quick. It's just being kicked all over the place. So, but we do appreciate that. Be much in prayer for those that can't be here. We've got several families out with the stomach bug. Uh, we've got one out with uh, the flu, at least we know of, and Miranda and her family. Uh, her grandmothers have been in the hospital all day, so you be much in prayer for them. Many others, I'm sure, that God knows about and all the things that's going on. So you be praying for them. But we always like to give you an opportunity to serve the Lord, so maybe somebody's got a song on your heart. Come on here. The B I B L E is like the book for me. I stand upon the word of God. B I B L E. the Spirit, but if you got your Bibles, we'll open up over to the book of Acts chapter number 11. Acts chapter number 11. When you find your place, if you're able, please stand with us for the reading of God's Word. Do be much in prayer for us tonight. We desire your prayers. I did see Brother Josh today and uh, talked to him a few minutes. Mason is doing a, a little, feeling a little better, but still feeling pretty rough. So, I think his fever is down some, and I'd give him some medicine, so you be much in prayer for this young man. Acts chapter number 11, and we'll begin to read here at verse number 25. Verse 25, the Bible says, And then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when they had found him, they had brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you Lord. Just summon ourselves before thee. Lord, I thank you for another day and another opportunity, God, to be able to gather out on this side of eternity. Lord, just to be able to worship and to serve you. God, we don't want to get in the way of anything. If anything needs to be said or done, I pray, God, that person would be willing, that, that person would be able to get up. I pray today, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you'll give the message from on high. It cannot come from me, Lord, but it has to come from you. Lord, if it's going to do any good tonight, dear God, I pray that hearts would be open. Lord, we'd be ready to receive that which you have to pour upon us. God, may we take those into our life and into our heart. Lord, that we serve you with everything. And I pray tonight, dear God, we'll take it and we'll grow by it. Lord, we'll just let you have rule and reign in our life. Help us to be the light you want us to be. And God, I pray for somebody here tonight that needs to grow up a little closer. I pray, Lord, you'll open up that door. 
Lord, most of all, if there's one that do not, does not know you as their personal Savior, God, they will not leave here. Lord, in that same shape, but they'll accept you as their Savior. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, Lord, not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. I got to thinking this week, and the, the Lord began to put this on her heart, and was thinking about it, and I got to thinking back about the, the back when we used to work out in the field all the time. We used to, there's an organization called OSHA. Now, I know most of us, most of us has been in construction, most of us has been in plant work or any kind of work, you know who oh you know who OSHA is, right? I remember I, I, the, the reason that you they come back to my mind this week. I was thinking back. I, I remember a guy I used to work with, and he had a little sign, a, a little sticker on his truck, and it said, "If you think OSHA is a small town in uh, in Wisconsin, you're in trouble." If you don't know who OSHA is, OSHA is the Occupational Safety Health and, uh, and Health Administration. Now look, I know a lot of us probably have already, when I said OSHA, your mind went to bad thoughts. Amen. Because all you thought about was them showing up and causing trouble wherever they showed up at. But you really know that OSHA was not formed for that. OSHA was formed because that we had uh, managers and we had owners that were forcing their people to work in unsafe conditions. Amen. I, they were having to work in bad things and, and bad environments and, and places that were really going to hurt them. Now, as in most things, in my, as most things in life, uh, uh, organizations and people alike have been corrupted uh, uh, and have went down the wrong path. Uh, and you know the bad thing about, I mean, I know I told somebody years ago, we used to work construction all the time, and I said, if you did everything uh, that OSHA wanted you to do, you'd never get a job done. And I know most of us kind of feel that way. I, but I tell you what, really, why the Lord put that back on our heart today is I believe we do uh, still in our in our regular life, in our spiritual life, uh, we do need some safety training. Amen. Uh, and I was thinking here about Paul, and the Bible said here that uh, uh, there they was, and it tells us there that uh, that uh, Barnabas had, had departed there down to Tarsus to seek out Saul uh, to find him and and to bring him up there. And we know Saul to be Paul, and but anyway, he was bringing him up there, and they came up to uh, to Antioch there. Uh, and they had studied there, and they had learned there, and they'd been training there for over a year. And, so, and they finally began to call them Christians. Do you have any idea why they called them Christians? Because they acted just like Christ. So they had taught the same teachings. They had to, to, uh, preached the same messages. So they had done some of the same miracles. Uh, but they had the same beliefs that Christ had. Uh, and there they were called Christians. I think a lot of times uh, uh, in our life we neglect to follow after the rules, uh, follow after safety things that will keep us uh, from falling in the way, uh, falling uh, into the the traps that Satan has for us. And we really, we need to realize that, look, every, we're living on, I mean, all of us here that's ever been in construction, I, we've been on job sites that are absolutely dangerous. You want to know what the worst things are? We put ourselves in some bad situations. You know that? Yeah. Now look, I'm sure all of us have been asked to do some things that we shouldn't, we shouldn't have done. We've all acted in ways where we've had somebody ask us to do things we probably should have never been around. But most of the time, we put ourselves in those bad situations to start with. And you know what the sad thing is? A lot of times, the equipment, the safety equipment was provided for us, but yet we neglected to use what we had. We didn't want to take the extra time that it took to be able to use that safety equipment because it would slow us down and we'd get the job done a whole lot faster. Well, let me just tell you something. Not all time they live. Fortunately for us, so here today, we've survived some of the most uh, cr most crazy things and situations that we've been in. Now, look, I tell you, I was thinking the other day. I, I, I know in our in our line of work that we did for years, uh, uh, and I'm sure in some other people's line of work too, been in some crazy situations and crazy things going on. And, 
and there's no, there's no. I mean, in my mind right here, right now, tonight, uh, there's nobody that has a more dangerous job than this young man right here, right, our son. I really, I really didn't realize that until a couple of years ago. And you know, I knew it was dangerous, but I never really thought about it. A couple of years ago, he wasn't even on call. We'd been on the, I don't know if we'd all been on the lake, but I know him and Sierra. I believe mean, might have been before, had kids, I believe. But they, uh, they'd been on the lake, and uh, the power was out. Uh, my neighbor, uh, uh, a limb or something had fallen on our neighbor's uh, uh, ha line going over to his house. And they knew Jason, they knew where I lived, they knew where the address was, so they knew it was right beside where we was. So they called Jason, and Jason came by the house and said he'd be back, and he had to go get a truck and come back out there, and he had to turn the power off to our house, and he, you know, and all that stuff. But anyway, this is what I say. I sat there, and I told Melissa, I said, I'm going to watch Jason. And when he got up in the truck and began to work on the power line, when he got to where he had to work on the live power, I had to get up and go in the house. I told Melissa, I said, I can't watch this. Because my child, I mean, he's I mean, a grown man. But he is still my little boy. Uh, to, in my eyes, in a lot of ways, he's still like those two running around. Uh, but I thought, you know, the Lord began to put all these thoughts back on my mind this week. Uh, and I got to thinking, how in the world do we allow our children to run around in this world uh, and never be pre and never prepare them uh, for the things that the devil is going to do to them? We need to make sure that we do this for them. OSHA, make sure that you have what is called PPE. Do you know what PPE is? PPE is personal protective equipment. In other words, it is designed to protect you. Amen. Not designed to protect everybody else, but it's designed to protect you. Do you know what? We have exactly the same thing in our spiritual life, in the life, in the, in the road, and the hazards that we have to face out here on a daily basis. God has prepared us and give us personal protective equipment. Uh, and you want to know what that is? Uh, most importantly is that you have a personal relationship with God. Uh, look, I can pray for you until I'm blue in the face. Uh, your mom, your dad can pray for you until they're blue in the face. Uh, but unless you act upon it and you take the, the, the salvation, uh, you take what God has really given for you uh, and you do nothing with it, uh, there is nothing that we can help you with right. because it's personal. It's a personal relationship. We got some men here that work up there in a plan and do other things. And if you take that for those precautions and you do what you're supposed to do, you have a high probability of walking away. Amen? You have a high probability of not even getting hurt. If you do what you're supposed to do and you take those steps to use it for yourself. Let me just tell you something. Mom and dad can go to church all their life. They can take you to church all their life. You can be around in-laws and family that take you to church and go around all your life. But unless you find, ever have that personal relationship with God, when it comes time to cross over this valley, when it comes time for you to be set, the, the separation of the wheat and the tares, I promise you, it's not going to be because mom and dad got you there. It's not going to be by their good works. Do you know what the Bible said? Now, Jesus said it's going to say unto them, Enter in. Who? Thy good? Because of mom and dad? Absolutely not. Because of grandma and grandpa? Absolutely not. Now, it's a personal relationship. It's a personal thing with God. Hey, you need to make sure that you have that relationship with Him. You need to make sure that you keep up with it. And you stay on top of that relationship. I want to make sure that my relationship is what it's supposed to be. Hey man, look, OSHA and them set some guidelines. They on, on almost every piece of equipment that they have, they oversee that it's personal protective equipment. Do you know it has dates on it? When it was manufactured, 
and they've told you how long that it's supposed to last, I'll guarantee you that everybody in here has something that's out of date. I'll guarantee you, whether it's at work or somewhere else, most of us have said, well, it's still good. It's still all right. Well, let me just tell you something. You can neglect your relationship with the Lord. You can neglect it and neglect it and neglect it. Hey, but I'm going to tell you something. I want to make sure mine, because it's one day you're going to need it. One day you're going to stand before Him. But I want to make sure I'm not neglecting my relationship with the Lord. Uh, it's my personal relationship. I want to hang on to it. Amen. Amen. I've used this example before, <coughs> probably many times, and I'll use it again. Salvation is like a guy that gets on an airplane. This is, and he gets on that airplane and they hand him a parachute. <coughs> and they say, now put this on. It will make your ride more comfortable. It will make it more enjoyable. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had no doubt. <coughs> I've had no doubt. Did it make your ride more comfortable? No. Did it make your my ride more enjoyable? Absolutely not. But that's what most people think salvation is supposed to do. Is to make it more comfortable. You know what most people would have done? Now Danny probably didn't have enough sense to do this. But most people about halfway through would have took that thing off and laid it to the side and said, that guy's crazy. This thing ain't doing nothing but making me absolutely miserable. Amen? That's what I would have done and laid it to the side and rode a little more comfortable, wouldn't you? That's the way most people treat salvation. They think it's going to be, you know, they get told that everything's going to be a whole lot better. But I'll tell you what, you take the same guy, and I'll probably say this is the shape that Danny was in. I will say you take the same guy, you hand him a parachute, and you tell him, say, look, you're going to need this because we get ready. When we get up so high and we get over a certain place, we're going to kick you out. And see there? Hey, now look, there's a whole lot of difference. I tell you, no matter how uncomfortable the ride got, no matter how miserable you thought that thing on your back was, it kept pushing you out of sin. You know what you're going to do? You're going to hang on to it a whole lot tighter. Now, you're going to make sure that you've got that when they stand you up and push you out the back. You're going to want to make sure. I'd be inspecting that bad boy, wouldn't you? I'd make sure it had all the cords it's supposed to have. I'd make sure it had the right date on it. I'd make sure it was inspected. Hey, I'd do everything. Hey, that's exactly the way that we ought to treat our spiritual life because we need Jesus every second day. Amen. Every single day of the week. We need Him. Let's make sure that it's where we're where we should be with Him. Amen. Make sure check it out. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so many times we can take. If you really want to know what kind of personal protection equipment that you need, you can turn over there to the book of Ephesians. Chapter number 6. You'll find out over there about the whole armor of God. Hey man, here's what I want to tell you. If you're out, if you work anywhere, I don't care where you work. If you work anywhere, one of the most precious things that you can protect are your feet. If your feet hurt, you're miserable. Hey man. Yeah. I mean, if your feet hurt, you cannot absolutely stand nothing. I mean, you will, it will drive you crazy. You know, that's why the Bible said over in the book of Ephesians, uh, to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Uh, in other words, you know what they're having them shod with? Uh, that means to have your feet set in. That means to have your feet founded on. Now, standing fast. Amen. Uh, I, I was saying a long time ago, 
It don't matter how big they are. If they, if they can't stand, they can't fight. Amen. I'm here to tell you right now, make sure you got your feet shod on a firm foundation. And you'll find that foundation in this old book right here. You'll find it in this old KJV. You'll find it in the Word of God. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I don't want to take nobody else's word for it. I want to take God's word for it. Amen. I had some people people ask me, look, I, I try not to get off on I, look, I'm not gonna argue with anybody on, on what they what the what kind of word they use. But them three little letters right there, that KJV, you wanna know why I use that? Because that's what I got saved with. Amen. The best, brother. Amen. Amen. We bought my wife was years ago, I mean many years ago now. I don't mean to make her sound old, but many years ago. <laughs> She was. She'd been playing the piano for just a year or two, or a few years. She wanted. I think it's a church hymn. No, I'll forget my what it is. So she wanted a big song book, and it had different scriptures in it, and throughout the book. And I ordered it. I wanted to make sure we got us a King James version. And when that thing came in, it said the King James. The most literal word for word translation. Did y'all hear what I just said? Let me just say that right now. The most literal word for word translation. You may tell you what that means. That means that's as close as you can get to, to the actual word of God that was written in Greek and Hebrew. That means it does not matter. It didn't have Joe's opinion. It didn't have Schofield's opinion. It didn't have Thomas Nelson's opinion. It didn't have nobody else's opinion. But it had God's word written down. That's why I say have your feet shod with the real deal. Amen. Don't stand on nothing else but what thus said the Word of God. Amen. I say that's important. Amen. It's very important that we know this book. I'm not talking about just what I learned on Sundays. Right. I'm talking about reading that thing. Yes. You want to have your feet shod with it. You want to be able to stand on it. Here's what you do. If all the time you read this Bible is when you hear some old snot-nosed preacher up here hollering at you, then what you have to do when the devil comes knocking on your door is say, what did he tell me? What did he say? Look, he wants us to read this thing. Right. He wants us to in, have that thing in our life. When we get that thing in our life, and we get it in there on a daily basis, and we begin to get that thing in there, it tells us that we'll be able to learn it, we'll be able to recall it, we'll be able to know it, and we'll be able to pick this thing up. It's important that we know about it. Right, amen. It's important that we know as much of it as we can. Right. Can we tell you why? If you don't believe me, you turn over there in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3. And you'll begin to read down there about the first temptation that ever come to man. What did the devil try to tell Eve? He gave her a word. Did he not? He said, did not the Lord say that thou shalt eat of every tree that is in the garden. That's what he said, wasn't it? <coughs> That's exactly what he said. No, it wasn't. That's exactly what he said up to the point that you left the rest of it out. Right. See, that's why we want to make sure that we have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Bible tells us that he said you should eat of every tree that's in the midst, which is in the garden, except the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Listen, <coughs> that except is a whole game changer. Anything that's left out of this book 
Anything that's changed from this book is a game changer. Amen. Right. I want you to know something. We need to make sure. Hey, if we read over that, the Bible tells us this. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right? Yeah. I want you to realize that he went on past that uh, and he said this. Uh, he said, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him they might be saved. Then what did he say? But if they don't believe, they are condemned already. Hey, listen, if you don't believe on Christ, if you leave part of it out, you're not going on your own terms. You're not going on your own way. That's why it's important to have your feet shod with the preparation of this book. Amen. To know this book. Another important in, our, in, in, in the construction industry is eye protection, right? It's also very important in the spiritual uh, in our spiritual life. Bible tells us that this is the light of the whole body. The light of the whole body. I, I, I may get one or two hands. How many people would rather read a book than watch a movie? Not a single one. Maybe one. Maybe one. You know why? It's so much easier to watch that movie. We don't have to work near as hard, do we? But you know why? This whole lie, this whole eyes is the light of the body. It was things we allow to come in. The Bible tells us to turn away and to flee the very appearance of evil. It's important the things that we allow to, our, our eyes to see. We have to protect them. Amen? Uh, we're not going to be able to turn our eyes. There's going to be things that come in uh, that the old devil throws against us. Uh, but he tells us to take the shield of faith that we might be able to quench the fiery darts of the devil. That does not mean that I continue to look at it, uh, that I continue to listen to it, uh, that I continue to allow that to come into our life. Uh, it's important the things that we allow ourselves to see. Uh, yes, it is. The things that we see and the things that we watch would we want our children to watch? Then if that answer has any doubt or any, you have to even think about that question, you're watching the wrong stuff. Hey Amen? You're watching the wrong thing. Can we allow the wrong stuff in? We're going to the wrong, would you want your children going to the places that you're going to? Look, it's a personal relationship. It's a personal protection. But I want to protect my family, amen? I want to make sure that they're safe. Uh, I'll tell you something else. Over in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he also told us to take what? The helmet of salvation. Amen? you got to protect that noggin, amen? Uh, that's one of the most important things. You don't realize how easy it can happen. I remember, yeah, I mean, it can happen just like this. I mean in the split second. In a split second. Jason was in, I don't want to keep picking on Jason tonight, but Jason was in sixth grade playing baseball. <coughs> he was pitching. He played, he played a little bit of everything, played a little bit everywhere, but he was pitching. He was out in the yard one night just uh, he was smoking. It. I mean, he was going. Joe and one of his cousins came down and won the bat. Okay. I don't know how many times. How many times we struck him out? I mean, never even come close. And the last time, he barely, I mean, I mean, barely even touched the ball. And it, it ricocheted in enough to miss my glove. He hit me right here. Oh. No helmet, no mask, nothing. I, got, I just fell over, got up, went in the house, I wish I, I could have cried. Blood and stuff coming out of my nose. And I'm big and tough. I didn't go to the doctor till the next day. And I went, got, went to work. And I'd been over and I about passed out. And Melissa called. I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm at work. She said, you didn't go to the doctor. I drove my, finally drove myself to the doctor. And I got down there, 
And the doctor looked in my ear and said, you was never here. He said, you go to the emergency room and you go now. He had busted a sinus tube. It had leaked spinal fluid. It had done all kinds of things. I was in the hospital for, for a little over a day. I can tell you right now, and I said, I don't tell you that to give for sympathy or think how stupid I am. Do you ought to think how crazy I was? And that was pretty dumb, wasn't it? I realize now how dumb that was. But do you realize how dumb it is to walk through life, let the devil fill your mind with the things of this world and the things that you ought to be doing and filling your mind with worry? Filling your mind with doubt. Filling your mind with all those things. Why do you think He told you to take the helmet of salvation? I know that Christ is to be the head of the, head of the body. He's the head of the church. But He wants us to make sure that we know without a shadow of a doubt that who it is we serve. And He wants you to know and who it is that you serve can defeat anything that the devil has to offer. That the devil has to throw at you. Hey, I'm telling you, you've got to a helmet. You've got some protection and you need to make sure you realize just how big God is. You've got to realize just how much God can do. Hey, quit letting the devil rob you. Quit letting the devil steal things from you. Quit letting him make you miserable. Hey, I say, put on the head of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Do something else. These old hands right here. They don't need to be out. Amen. Well, listen, I was talking coming up the road today. We were talking about it. We had the boys today. And I mean, they were wide open all day long. And I was told, well, I told Riley at one point, Riley's wanting me to wish me and tag and things. I probably had to sit down. I told him, I said, I don't have spidey strength like you do. You know what he did? He came over and went, you got spidey strength, Paul. You know how long that lasted? About one more trip to the house. <laughs> and about all it lasted. And Melissa and I was talking coming up the road. I said, we have been running wide open all day. Melissa said, if it wasn't the boys at the house, we'd be done something else all day. Melissa and I do not know how to sit down. We do not know how to stop. I, I, I thought I said, you know what's bad? We'll schedule days to do nothing. And you know what we do? Find something to do. Amen. Uh, let me just tell you something. That's not a bad thing. Amen. Uh, that's not a bad thing to keep us up, uh, to keep us moving. Uh, it's not a bad thing to keep these old hands are working uh, and to keep them a going. Uh, I'm not talking about just physically, uh, but I'm talking about spiritually. Uh, you need to make sure these things is working for God. Uh, it's doing the things that God wants you to do. Uh, hey, and leading your children and leading your family uh, in the way that He would have you to lead them. Uh, I'm telling you, it's important. Hey, to stay busy. It's important. Hey, to be able to have something to do. Right. Amen. Have something to do. I was thinking a long time ago. I was watching something the other night, and it was about a. It was a woman. Uh, somebody was cleaning windows, and they had fought. They fell, but they had a harness on. Them. And I got to thinking about that harness. You know, they call it a. Uh, that safety harness and you know it's a uh, I don't know how many connections that it has there and you put this thing on your body I've had to wear them before and I, they're not that comfortable but I'll tell you one thing if you ever fall you'd be glad you had one on yeah. amen and I was thinking about that harness and you put this thing around your legs you put it around your shoulders and it ties around your waist but it has a single point of connection you hook it in the back, you hook it, you make hooks in the back, and it hooks to somewhere. It's got a single point connection. You know what? We've got the greatest harness there in the world. Hey, hey, man. I don't have to run to Buddha or Muhammad. Right. I don't have to run to 25 other gods and pray to them. Hey, I've just got one. Yeah. I've got one that done it all for me. Yeah. The Bible tells me they are three, but yet they are one. Amen. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives within us. 
and the God and the, the Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Hey, whoever's in my Father's hands will not pluck his out. Amen. Ain't you glad to know? Like, hey, you've got something there. You've got a connection point. You've got a connection right into heaven. <coughs> Here's what I was thinking of. I know these times that I mess up. Uh, these times that I fail. Uh, these times that I make mistakes. Uh, there's times that I get in too big a hurry. Uh, I ain't got enough time to pray. Uh, I ain't got enough time to do this. Uh, I ain't got enough time to do that. Uh, well, I'm going to tell you one thing for certain. Uh, we better make time. Because uh, I'm glad that no matter when I do mess up, uh, I, because there is going to come a day the time when you're going to fall. Uh, ain't you glad to know that you've got some protection now? Uh, ain't you glad to know you've got one that will catch you? Hey, when you stumble and fall, I'm glad to know that He is always there for me. Hey. Are you protected? Every head bowed, and every eye closed, every Christian praying, every heart searching. Have you checked up on your PPE lately? Have you checked up on where you are with God? Your prayer life? All kinds of things. Let me just tell you. I'd make sure I was where I should be with God. Mm, I'd make sure I was doing exactly what God would have me to do. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you've got something you want to do. You've got something you need to get a hold of God for. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your opportunity. Give that all to God. To give it all to Him. Whatever it is you need, you can find it right there on the altar. You can find it right there. Because I promise you one thing for certain. The old devil will do everything he can. He'll do everything he possibly can to rob you. He'll do everything he possibly can to steal it from you. And I make sure I'm fully protected. This altar's open tonight for anyone for any reason. All the things, all the things, which you just pray. Maybe you need to come tonight. She's going to play this last verse and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. You want to come? You want to come? I'm telling you, this right here is where you can get what you need. This right here is not going to cost you a dime. You're never going to go out and spend a fortune to get your family ready, to get help you get ready to protect your family. You're not going to have to spend a fortune. You can do it right here on this altar for God. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Jason, you pray for us. Here on them, pray for us. Here on them, the rough place every day. God, I thank you for the love of God. I thank you for sending your son, God, to send out that cruel death, Lord, on that old rugged cross, God. I thank you, God, for what you've done. I pray God you want to do God. I pray for the Lord, God, on the altar tonight, Lord. Whatever the need may be, God, I pray God you just touch the Lord and bless him, God. I pray for the one for the Lord God. Here, Lord, tonight, you as other prayer request, God, you know what their need is. I pray for the one for the Lord God. You just touch them, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray God, you be with us, Lord God. We'll work on the church down here. Pray God, you just touch, Lord God. Keep us safe yes. and help us, God, to mentally and physically, God, to do the things that you would have us to do. Yes. And I pray God that you just be with us, be with the Lord, all the activities that we've got going on this summer, Lord. Yes, you, Lord. just touch them. And with our church, I pray to God that we just touch, Lord, and pray to God that we'd see souls saved, God. I thank you, God, for everything you've done, Lord, and your holy, sweet, and precious. Amen. Amen. We do appreciate you tonight. Maybe somebody's got a word or a testimony on your heart before we close. I thank God for saving myself. You're talking about that. You know, people buy the best equipment and the most expensive they can to protect themselves. Sure. And what we've got is free. Sure. It costs Jesus his life. Right. But he offers it to us for free. And it's guaranteed. Guaranteed for a lifetime. You won't have to worry about it wearing now. Eternity guaranteed. Don't have to worry about it being second hand. No. 
Don't have to worry about it being wore out or ever wearing. Amen. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Something on your heart? Well, Brother Terry, I thank you for that message. God, I think that's a great message. And I mean it. Amen. I really appreciate, it. appreciate you, Brother Ross. Anybody else tonight? Hearts and minds clear? Be much in prayer one for another and all those on the prayer list. Pray for all the things that's happening down here at the new church. Uh, Sheet Rocks are moving along pretty good and uh, they've got the classrooms done. They're moving down to the other end of the bathrooms and all that this week. So you pray for all that. Uh, we need to probably start picking out paint and all that good stuff in the interior. Lord willing, exterior paint will start this week about Wednesday. Hopefully Wednesday. So y'all pray for good weather. I, I know we're supposed to have some warmer temperatures, so y'all be praying about that. All these things are exciting, but the most important thing is you be praying for God to fill it up with His Spirit. Amen. Shake somebody's hand, tell you love God bless.